What's up team? Hope everyone's having a good day. All right, so today what I want to talk about is uh, delayed muscle soreness and fatigue. <laughs> People just have this general conception that you can just go to the gym and you feel good and everything after it. Yeah, that's the case. But man, there are days after I do a leg session or like a certain chest session or even like a push session or something that involves like shoulders or back work where like you cannot literally move that muscle group like throughout the day. It hurts that much. Like you've done too much volume on that group or just go into a failure and push yourself outside your comfort zone. Like, Sometimes, some people use the analogy like walking around with carrots stuck on my backside, but that's what it feels like when you haven't done something in a while, push outside your comfort zone, and then you're actually feeling the, the uh, results of that, like how much stress you put on your muscles. So, like if you haven't played like a game of footy or something like that in a long time, or six months to a year, and then you try to get back into it, and you can't walk the next day, that's that delayed muscle soreness, the fatigue. So I just want to talk about how you can manage that. It's something that I found really good and uh, helps a lot. Apparently, according to uh, some scientific studies, is uh, coffee reduces delayed muscle soreness by 48%. That's massive. And I think a lot of it is head game as well. But um, what I've found as well, like drinking, drinking um, caffeine or coffee, as well as um, just being active. So uh, some of it call it, um, dynamic stretching so you basically just want to maybe do like some yoga some form of stretching PNF stretching is really good Peter Pan and when we're bored we play in the woods always on the run from Captain Hook run run lost boy they say to me away from all of reality Peter Pan Some form of active recovery, so that could be um, stretching, as I said, PNF stretching, some yoga. Uh, what else we got there? We've got walking, some steady state cardio, so just some running. You just want to get some blood flow on that muscle group. You can even do like a feeder set on that muscle group. So say you do lower body and the next day your legs are really sore because generally it takes anywhere from 24 to 72 hours for your muscles to recover post um, exercise. So post doing weights, you're looking up maybe from 48 to 72 hours before you can actually um, redo that work that you did two to three days prior to that. So. You, you can look at it in the form of um, cardio. Uh, so walking, steady state cardio. So walking or running, like mild running, just to get blood flow in the muscles. And when I said our uh, feeder set just before, I basically meant you go in and you do a really light set on that muscle group. So say you did uh, maybe like five by fives on chest on a flat bench and your chest was really, really sore or you did uh, like five by five five by fives on squats and your legs are really sore. You just do like one or two sets on that, but don't go to a fail at like 50% of your one rep max. So say you're doing 100 kilos on your squats, just go and do, put uh, like 60 kilos or even 40 kilos on the bar and just work that range of motion. So like perform that squat so you're not, so you're getting some blood circulation into the muscles. You're basically just gonna cycle in some blood into that muscle group. You're gonna use it, it's gonna get warm and you're not gonna feel the, uh, the fatigue as much. So generally the work First thing I find is not moving. So when you're not moving and not doing anything, that's when it's going to be at its worst. So if you just push through and um, like probably I wouldn't work that muscle group out, like try go for the exact same volume or intensity that you did the day before. Just uh, work it lightly. So yeah, just get out and move. That like and maybe have some coffee if if you're that way inclined, and that should bring down your delayed muscle soreness. And uh, also. Uh, saunas are supposed to be really good as well. Cry cryotherapy is supposed to be really good. It's more so for like endurance athletes, and it is quite expensive. But you can do, you can use heat packs, just stretching and um, supplementation, like taking creatine, protein, and uh, L-glutamine and uh, fish oil tablets, vitamin D, 
as well as um, oh, what's the other one? Potassium, I think it is. They usually it usually comes in one form of a tablet. So you got vid D, um, zinc, and potassium usually in the one tablet, and that that will help with delayed muscle soreness as well. There's lots of things you can do, but um, to actually reduce a delayed muscle soreness, DOMS, of and that fatigue. Uh, it, it's just recovery. So basically, that's the process where you're building the muscle because in the workout, you've stretched it, you've done the damage, you've uh, induced everything to create muscle growth and that, that post-recovery, like when you have delayed muscle soreness, that is when you're actually recovering. So, But delayed muscle soreness isn't a, a very good sign of um, how good your session was. So you don't have to be sore to grow muscle. So... And it, it is a good indicator of how hard you push yourself, but you don't want to be a, like, I, so after you've done squats, primarily you want to be able to walk correctly the next day. If you can't walk the next day or two, like you've probably done a little bit too much. So uh, there's going to be days where it's going to be like that. It's going to be days there isn't, especially if you're starting a new training cycle or a new program, your body will get used to it, but just be aware of that. Delayed muscle soreness is not a very good indicator of um, like how much muscle you're going to grow. Sometimes it can be counterproductive and too much.